Well, we picked him up at prison. We got him a haircut. He had a hot meal, and now Tommy Robinson sits down with me. What a pleasure to see you outside of prison and free again. It's good to be seen. Um, this time is a lot different than your incarceration in HMP only. I would describe that as torture, physical and psychological. How was it this time? So, I was in Belmarsh, obviously, and the governor of Belmarsh made a complete effort to make sure that my rights were recognised. I was in for a civil offence, it's, it's not a criminal offence. As a civil prisoner, you're entitled to more money. So my big thing... In, as in, in to spend more of your own money. To spend more money, £47.50 a week I could spend, mm -hmm. which meant I could buy as much tinned food as I wanted, and really, basically, and fruit and things like that. In only last year, £10 a week I had, so I could buy six tins of tuna. That's it. And, and you couldn't eat the prison cafeteria food because, of course, it was made by the prison Muslims. Muslim gangs. How was it in Belmarsh? Did you feel comfortable eating their prepared food? So from, the, from when I was, I went into Belmarsh prison and come out of Belmarsh prison without seeing a prisoner. The only prisoner I saw on two separate occasions was Julian Assange. Now that's amazing to a lot of people that, because some, I mean, I, I don't know enough about Julian Assange to come to a firm conclusion, but some people call him a political prisoner. He's certainly not a violent man. You are definitely a political prisoner. For the two of you to, to wind up in the same prison, the same unit, that's yeah. quite something. Maybe it was inevitable, I don't so know. He's, he's, so he's in healthcare, which so basically where I was, was it's a prison within the prison. So essentially no one goes to this section bit. So you've got, you've got a corridor, you've got a corridor along here, and there's no windows in the corridor. So there's a corridor, there's a door at this end and a door at this end. And, along, and on this strip, there'll be four rooms. And a prison officer's room where the staff will sit, two, two members of staff then an empty cell, and then my cell, and then the next cell, which is another empty cell with a bike, um, exercise bike in it. And at the end you'll have, then at the end is a shower. So, and then my, so for me to have it, so the idea is that you're contained on here, no one sees you, no one knows you're there. They call it a suite, don't they? They call it a yeah, suite. For anyone, who stayed, for anyone who stayed in a suite in a hotel, it's not, it's not, it's not a suite yet. It's, free, it's, it's, basically free, it's basically free cells. But, so at nine in the morning, so they'd come and my door would be opened at nine in the morning, quarter to nine. And then when my door's open, then the, of, the officers then sit in their room. And then you ha I have till quarter past 11 to shower, use the bike. So you're on your own, but I'll go on the bike for an hour. The bike was a godsend. The first day I, first day I saw the bike, because like, they said, it's got, you've got your own gym. Because I said, I want to go to the gym. You've got your own gym. When I was coming in re reception, I saw the bike at first, my gym. Is that all it is? A bike to the yeah, it's it actually good. No, no, no. It's, and then, um, so then I'd, I'd do an hour on the bike. Um, I'd we'll pace up and down to cool, to cool down a bit before I had a shower. And then I'd have a shower and then I'd go on an exercise yard, which is a contained exercise. So, so the, the exercise yard backs onto where my window is. And um, it's like you, you see from the visit room, it's four story high. Mm -hmm. But there's all windows looking on this exercise yard, so it's a, it's a, square, a courtyard. It's a, it's a courtyard um, but there's no cells that look onto it. There's no there's no cells around here. This part this part of the prison. This this is all offices. But then at the top, there's four cells from healthcare. So if you've had an operation, if you're on a, a hospital wing, um, there's four windows that looked onto this courtyard. Junior Assange just was the second window in. So. You could holler up to him and he could holler down to you. Yeah, so two days, where were we now? Two, three days ago, I spent 30 minutes when I could see him then because, again, he's not having a good time. Mm. He's been in, in he's, um, form of detention for many years. Yeah, and, and, the, and as he says, the isolation is getting to him or got to him. I don't want to pry into any confidences, although I don't think I'd call it a confidence. Obviously, every word he said to you and vice versa was tracked by the prison and probably various intelligence agencies. I don't think there's a private word spoken in those contingency suites. I know when I visited you, there was a camera in the ceiling. There's cameras everywhere. Are you at liberty to discuss what you talked about with him? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be aware. That's why I wouldn't be aware if, if he didn't want me to. Mm. So through, through a mutual friend that was... You know what, I, I, you don't, no problem, I just yeah. was curious. But, yeah. but the fact that you spoke with him was interesting. I want to put him... Well, I spoke to him about, about a mutual friend we spoke about this morning. Right. So any, anything, I said if I can... No problem. I, I was just curious because I know our viewers will be tantalized. Now, when I visited you on one of those occasions, I heard some moaning or some shouting, obviously not from Assange. There's another 
prisoner, did, was there a murderer in the wing yeah, as well? A, so on healthcare as well. So there's a prisoner who. So in the first week, I was speaking to him because you can't. I couldn't see him, so I haven't seen him. But you can shout out the window and you can speak to the person. There's four windows there, but and there's one lad there who was. I was feeling sorry for him the first week. He's having a terrible sentence. He's ten years in. Um, but then I, I, ten years in isolation. No, he's, so he's not in isolation. So he's in help. Yeah, for his door to open, there has to be four, four security wearing full riot gear every time. Oh my God, he must be a monster. Well, or maybe not. Well, maybe he, not. No, they no, could say is, that no, about he, you. No, he is. So he's, the crime he told me he's in there for, I checked out because I didn't want to be talking. To, I want to know what he's in there for. He told me he's in there for murdering his mate. He's not in there for murdering his mate. He's in there for murder and raping a 16-year-old girl, throwing her in the fence. Oh God. So he's having a bad 10 years. And when I found that out, I thought it was good that he's having such a bad sentence and I'm glad, I hope he has another 15 years of hell in there. But um, that's, that's the only, and, and, and so when anyone who's been in prison, it's the hustle and bustle of being in prison. You, it's, it's the noises of being in prison, the environment of being in prison. But this wasn't like being in a prison because as I said, the only person I saw briefly, which was once, so, and again, when the, so when I got in there, I expected the same as last time. 23 and a half hour bang up, them to block, and they blocked, like last time, the only time they'd get me out was at, at lunchtime for my shower. Now, and that's when I could use the phone. And my wife at the time was working actually in a school, she's not now, but she was working in a school. And my kids were at school, so I couldn't speak to my family. And they purposely done everything, so I expected the same. Mm. But, um, and I was probably quite rude. In the first day, I remember the gov when the governor come down to see me, I just said, shut, shut the door. Because I expected the same, but then it very, I knew quite quickly it wasn't the same. I mean, that, like, that, like, essentially, that governor is in a position where I've landed in this prison, which is why I haven't got a bad word to say about Belmarsh. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed and angered and frustrated at what they've been allowed to do again. By putting me at the Old Bailey, they know that sends me to Belmarsh. Belmarsh is, houses the worst terrorists and the worst it's like one time Bay. yeah it's the worst offenders in, when the worst offenders in the UK are sent to Belmarsh with Salman Abedi's brothers I believe in there now you, the man who attacked the police officer the British order, he come in there when I, so it's, it's it's terrorists and murderers and you and a civil offender so that, uh, Ross Kemp that's what because Ross Kemp's doing a, a documentary he's a British uh, journalist yeah he's, he's doing it and he come that's what he come down after a couple of days and I don't put it I, I think he come down after a couple of days saying, like, "How do you feel?" And you're not in, fr you're not, you're not a threat here. And he's, and he's right. And, and there was no, at no time in that sentence, after the first couple of days, did, did I feel in, in danger. No. Which is a de very different to my last sentence. So, and the, and the, as I said, the the office, the governor, once I'm in his jail, um, he's got a duty of care to keep me safe. So he's fulfilling his duty of care to keep me safe. But the, the argument, what I was saying to Ross Kemp is. In the last 12 months, I'm a journalist. I work as a journalist, whether the media like it or not, whether Geoffrey whether Jeffrey Cox or the British government or any of them like it, I've become the most watched journalist in the UK. They don't like that. Now, they don't like the stories I tell. Now, if the judge is summing up. Let's pretend for a second that I did commit contempt of court, which I didn't. Let's pretend I did. Then in the judge's summing up when she sent to me, because I had a right out there, which I went, I read to Russ, Russ Kemp. I said, listen to what she says. My offence was unintentional. So she's not saying I intended to break the law. So, so what she's saying is I committed an accident, yeah, an error, whilst working. Yeah? And for that, for that error that had no effect at all on the trial, they see this as a fit punishment. I've done, in the last 12 months, I've spent two and a half months, three months nearly, on solitary confinement in awful conditions in HMP only, with them messing with everything they couldn't mess with. This sentence was very different in the sense that the staff were great when I saw them. You know what I mean? I only see them for those two hours when my cell opens, and then because of the unit, because of this unit that I'm on, I believe the unit was built for Ian Huntley. Um, Who was here? Ian Huntley murdered two young children, two young girls, raped and killed them. Um, so he's... Ian Huntley's on it, there was another, um, Abu Hamza I believe has been on it, uh, Michael Abelardo has been on it, so it's an isolation unit, but there's, there's two set, there's two or three cells, so sometimes when they've got some people on, they might have a few of them on there, but essentially when I was on this, it's, it's just me on there, and um, so I said, I, I'm on this isolation unit for a civil offence, 
where, and it, for me, that's what I said, I, I, where I'm feeling sorry for myself, I said, this is just bullshit. For the, whole world, for the whole world to see, you know, and it sends out a bad, I think, a terrible image of this country that a journalist can get locked up, and it's not just locked up, it's not like, prison's prison, I've been to prison multiple times, as people know, and I've had in 2014, even when I was violently battered, I still had an all right sentence, I was on the wing, I was working, so people understand what your prison system is, even the terrorists, so the terrorists in, the terrorists in Belmarsh, HMP Belmarsh, on the terrorist wing, they get out of their cell at 8 in the morning, they then get locked up at 12. They then get out at 2 and they're locked up at 6. They're out all day. They can work, they can have education, they can play pool, they can play snooker. The prisoners have football pitches, you have all these things that keep you occupied and keep you busy. So essentially your day is like you're at work and then, and then you're locked up at night, basically. So that's why I said, I said to him, I said, I'm a civil offender, I'm the least offence in this whole entire prison. But I'm locked up the most out of anyone in this prison. It doesn't make any sense. But, but, but I'm not having a go again because I stressed that I'm not, having, I'm not saying anything about Belmarsh or because there's nothing else that governor could have done once. Right. The prison governor was sent to you. So what could he do but, but do what he did? Well, I, I did. I, I asked when I got in there to be located in a. I didn't ask for isolation again. Right. So I didn't go in and say I need protection, you need to isolate me. They, they didn't even ask a question this time. It was straight, boom, you're going down here. Well, but they said. So I said, why can't I be sent to an, a DCAP prison, which is That's what my thing. That's a fit. casual prison, like but, a low, low risk. Yeah, prison. well, you go, you go, like, you go home on weekends and that, you know, and you, you don't get locked up. It's, a, it's a low, it, in fact, my offence is a DCAP offence. Mm -hmm. So I said, like, how can I walk out of maximum security jail for contempt of court? And in did, a maximum did security. you ever get an answer to that? No. But, and then it's like, yeah, so I said, and, and then even, even the location, so if they'd have moved me to Exeter prison, I'd have been fine, because hmm. the, they just have, they have moved me in prison with low Muslim population, I'd be fine. You know, this morning when you came out of prison, <laughs> I think there was only one other uh, group of journalists there. I might, there might have been a second, but the Daily Mirror was there. And it, it was remarkable to me. Um, the reporter from the Daily Mirror was not just, I mean, I, I like a reporter that asks a tough question. That's the only interesting kind of reporter there is. But he wasn't asking you a question. He was prosecuting you. He was, he was telling you why you were wrong and why the system was wrong. I just, when he doesn't know. He doesn't he, I mean, he, he, he's not well briefed in the facts, but, he, but that's fine. A lot of journalists are ignorant. I was, maybe I shouldn't be shocked anymore, but he was saying, no, this is excellent. You specifically said if this happened in Russia or Venezuela, we'd be shocked. He said, no, this is exactly, I, I couldn't believe a journalist was, exuberant about your you know, censorship they're, they're, in prison. They're not, they're not, he's not, they're activists rather than journalists. But I haven't seen one journalist in the entire United Kingdom other than a couple of guys at Breitbart, not one at the Telegraph, at the Times, at the Mirror, at the Mail, at the Sun, not one. Well, my, my, my frustrating thing is, you said he was from the Mirror, the Mirror whilst I was in, in prison, the Mirror run a story, which actually the governor come in with Ross Kemp with the newspaper to say, and it's front page of the newspaper. And there was this story put out in the Daily Mirror. So he had the audacity of that journalist to come from the same paper, which absolutely made up a story. They, they said that you were knocked out in one punch by a 70-year-old pensioner in the, sh in the showers. I, I got that news in Canada. It was front page yeah, news in the, in the Daily Express. And I think the Mirror picked it the up. Daily Star, the, the Mirror, the Radio. The Star, that's right, it was the Daily Star. And I thought to myself, and, and you were incommunicado. I, I mean, I thought, that can't be right. But maybe it was, if it's on the front page of the star. Front page, massive. The, 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 the upsetting thing for me is that I bring home and my kids have been sent down. Yeah. So my kids think I'm being attacked in jail, which, it, which isn't true. But the other thing is that that, page, that story's gone out. With no, they didn't even ring the prison. It's completely like, and what that, the purpose for that, if you read the story, there's two pages in the, in the paper as well. If you read that story, it paints an image of who I am. It says that I come into prison thinking I'm the big man. Yeah, they said you walked in with a swagger. And I bully, it said I was in trying to intimidate an old age pensioner. And then it said, so that is the image that they're portraying. Another story went out whilst I was in there saying I bought drugs in the gym and I, um, and I was, I bought drugs in the gym and I was rushed to hospital for taking a detergent or something. And just, this was published? This is all published, yeah. And they're just completely made up. You know, and obviously they had, they didn't even pick up the phone to check. No, because I asked the governor. He, he's like, because when he bought the paper, he goes, "This isn't good. It's not good for our jail." 
And I said, <laughs> it's not going to do me. I said, what do you, like, I read one of these a month. Yeah. But, and I said, did they ring you? He goes, no, they didn't. They didn't ring us at all, they didn't. And then he, so he said, because someone, one of my supporters had gone into the reception of the prison that morning when it came out, uh, saying, well, there'll be that hundreds of us coming back here. <laughs> Like, and so it, it put, he, he actually said it puts my staff in danger. Well, and it makes the prison look like a place with no discipline and with random you know what, violence. Do you know what? It was, Maybe it, it is, but no, it, it wasn't was, in these it, cases. Oh, well, from what I saw of it, it, was, um, it had complete discipline. And the governor, so in that first week, when I first come into the jail, I thought 23 and a half hour lock up, everything's going to be, I'm not going to get in the gym. So, and there was a protest outside, obviously, planned, which I wanted. Um, and then I know that then people, some people on the outside, were, for, the, for the best intentions, I know Shazia Hobbs was contacting my wife, and I'm on a prison phone that's constantly monitored, so I can't say things on the phone. I, I cannot be sitting in a prison cell on a phone, organising protests or things outside. So I know there's a protest happening, um, which I want to happen, mm -hmm. because I wanted to be in a position as such to bargain with the governor, right. which the governor then come and saw me and said, we, look, this is disruptive to the jail. We can't have this. I said, all, all I want is my rights recognised. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure no one comes near this prison. And I know, I, I know at the time there was a lot of suspicion, like I know Shazia, Shazia for all of the right intentions was thinking that me, a protest outside the jail would upset all the other inmates, which would be problematic for me. But not knowing that I know that I'm inside the prison and yeah. no one's seeing me anyway, so there was, um, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Well, um, did you have your rights respected? I, I remember, I think in my second visit to you, you said you had not received mail for a month. And I made a fuss, and I, yeah. shortly thereafter you got it. That upset me that you didn't get your mail. Did you finally get everything? I finally got my mail. So, so essentially, the number, I don't complain about much, and once I saw, all I said to the governor when I come in, I just want to use the gym, yeah, just get me in the gym. And he did, on a Tuesday morning and a Thursday morning, before the staff started work, so some of the staff would come in early mm. to walk me through to the gym. So to the real gym? <laughs> to the actual gym, yeah, with some weight. So I'd be in the gym on, on my own. Yeah. Um, then look, just a little, so that's half seven them in the gate, yeah. So this is little things that will just absolutely, cr so the half seven them in the gate, yeah, and then, some, some, so it might be a Thursday morning, I'm sitting there at half seven, thinking this is the only time I'm getting off of this thing anyway, so I want to do, do it. And they might not turn up. So there was about four times when they didn't turn up, hmm. which then, just, you know, when they opened the door, I want to kill someone. Now, I just what, want to get in the gym. But, I remember in Onley, uh, they cancelled one of your lawyer's meetings and they... Yeah, this wasn't... Sure. There's nothing, nothing, I would say that nothing, even when you people were late, I would say that, not, in fact, after meeting the governor, um, he, I think they done everything, so nothing come towards. Right, with regards and my phone calls, with regards to the mail, um, what they said is your mail's up here, yeah, and, and it has to be read. It has to go through counterterrorism. I think that counterterrorism could have a lot more better time if they stopped looking at the There's letters. There's twenty-three thousand jihadis that track. Reading letters from my mum than, um, and my supporters, who are the average age is a sixty-year-old female. And uh, actually, look at look at some Islamic journeys, but counterterrorism has to go through my mouth, so everything has to be censored. So that's what they said. But to be honest, once I made the point and pushed the point to the governor, instantly he met. Some, they were in on overtime doing my mail, and I read anyone who sent me a letter. I read every one of them. Um, now, uh, your first time in Ireland, you had I think six big mm -hmm. duffel bags of I mail. Thought, How many do you have this time? We'll check out. I think about fourteen. And I mean, for me, it was so, it, it's an emotional and fulfilling to read people's stories of their difficulties in supporting me, mm. um, to read their difficulties at work. What is apparent is that everyone feels silenced and um, to read what they've gone through to show support for me and to read how much they care. So I'm reading all these stories and to read the, you know, my campaign, we, in my MEP campaign, I was going the working class, the working class, the working class. Judging by my mail, it's a very different mix-up mm. of support. Which and a lot of these supporters are supporters that won't, can't come out. They tell me their work, their jobs. I feel like there's so many people I know now because some people miss me daily. Mm. Certain people just wow. think, I, I know your whole life. I hope you enjoy dancing. <laughs> so <laughs> I used to. But I, I um. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'd spend my day. I'd spend five. I'd spend five hours a day reading. Well, again. I guess that keeps you company if, yeah, you, if you don't have human company. Now, in Onley, you didn't have any voices other than the shouting at you because they didn't give you a TV. Did you have a TV oh, did this you? time? Yeah, I did. All right. 
I didn't really. I, I, I turned the TV on in the evening if yeah. I watch it because, um, as I said during the day, I do. I done an hour on that bike every morning. Um, well, that's great. So you got those emails from emailandprisoner.com, Those were coming through. Yeah, and then I got. So I've got. Bo- I'll show you after this. We'll have a quick. Look. The cards I've got from all over the world. Just yeah, it was. It, it's amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was also quite satis- satisfying to think. To read the stories, and many, many of them, mate, would be from people who only started following me in the last 12 months. Mm. And many of them would say, start saying I'm a law-abiding citizen, I never broke the law, I've always had trust in our system, in judiciary, I cannot believe what I've just witnessed over the last 12 months. So, in the sense, I think, if whatever your objective was within this prison sentence, which I generally believe each time is, would be to try and just break me, is you actually waking more people up you've enlightened more people to the corruption of the media the corruption i'm actually boris johnson i'm quite happy to see um the same government as i i I actually like boris johnson i think he's shown himself as a very strong leader but jeffrey cox um the attorney general who's still an attorney general i think that government now knows what it's like when you get a politicized decision from a court (laughs) (laughs) you've now got a politicized decision from the court of scotland and now you know how it feels because my decision at the old bay was politicized if you, anyone who just you, you tried to prosecute me, I it, it got I got out of jail. We went before the head judge of the Old Bailey. He kicked out. What they then done is just replace the head judge of the Old Bailey and put me back in. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They'll keep trying. If they don't try this, they'll try that. I mean, I read your book, uh, Enemy of the State, and you know the the secret police have a saying: "Show us the man, we'll find the crime." Like if you investigate a guy enough you'll find something on him, even if it's an overdue library book. And I sense that that's the approach they're taking with you to waste your money, to waste your time, to stress you out, to stress out your family, to fatigue your supporters. I think that they are turning the process into the punishment. 66 days in prison is a punishment too, but that's actually a lot shorter. I mean, you've been fighting this stupid contempt of court thing for 16 months. Yeah, that's... um so yeah, even, even when I think when I was in there, because I've got I was getting anxious and worrying about coming out because I'm generally thinking, what next? What next? Because what will they? What's coming next? You know? <laughs> and I don't know if I and essentially I don't know if I was worrying more because I'm on isolation and that makes you worry, or 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 because I'm getting older. But I was thinking, Jesus man, hmm. what is coming next from their from their point? What will what are they, what are they going to do next? Well, let me ask you this, and again. If this is something confidential, just say so and I'll move on. Before you went in on an American TV show, Infowars, you said you were interested in asylum in America. And that was an interesting talking point, but my point of view is if you're interested in asylum, apply for asylum. Now you, you can say as a pass if you don't want to. Um, I, I am 100% interested in, in my wife and children being safe. Yeah, and that would in, a, in a foreign in the country? United, in the United States of America, I'd love it. Uh, uh, with regards to myself, there's a, there's a fight going on in this country and I want to be part of it. I can't imagine you in any... I mean, taking I, Tommy out of the UK is like taking De Gaulle out of France. It, it, it's, there's no such thing as De Gaulle outside of France. I don't even know if you could exist outside the UK. No. Uh, so, again, uh, times change and things change. and I, My worry, again, was when I was in jail that something could happen to the house or something. I don't, you know what I mean? When I'm not there. So all of those things play in just about... Was it easier on your family this time because they had the phone calls and the visits? Um, it was easier on them. Um, and we know we have the support. So, yeah, my, my son had... I said my son handled it a lot better. Um, my youngest was, didn't as much, but, um, yeah. I think because I think we knew it was happening, and then I think... I don't know if it's because... Because I'm, I'm in jail, and I know... So when I was in prison last time, I felt fine. Like when I was walk, walking out, I thought it looked great. And then everyone was like, Jesus Christ, problem of state here. And, but then, and then I realised I wasn't right mm-hmm. from that time in yeah. jail. So then I don't well, know I was that shocked happened. when I saw you. I couldn't, I was, I didn't even want to tell you what you looked like. That's what, don't worry, my fa- some of my family did. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, so then I, I thought, um, so then this time I think, that was conscious on the back of my head as well, because then I think, oh, this is going to happen again. And I'm sat here again. And then when I get out again, I'll have all the same problems I had last time. Yeah. All right, now, I, we got you out of prison in the morning, 
had a quick stop by McDonald's. I've, seen, I've, been, I've been watching Double Corp out of their advertising <laughs> TV. I know, that, I know that they stop them on the 24th of September. So I was thinking that. <laughs> you got your haircut, you went home, had a shower, etc. Your kids, let's check the time. Your kids are almost out of school, so I want to let you go. But there are two questions I have for you before we go. And maybe these are just of interest to me, but I think some of your viewers want to know too. We have a new prime minister in the UK um, who's a little bit eccentric in some ways. Who's a little bit a free, he has shown himself to be a free speecher in the past. Do you have, uh, do you have I remember once you wrote a great column in the paper in defense of gutter journalism. He says, gutter journalism keeps the gutters clean. I remember, I mean, he, he, he said, I don't care how nasty it is, free speech, I, I was impressed with that. I don't know if he's that way today. What's your feelings about Boris Johnson's government, Nigel Farage's influence? Do you have any hope that the essential systemic problems in the UK will be fixed or not even? The opportunity is there, hugely for Boris Johnson. I think his cabinet as well, I think Priti Patel was brilliant. I've watched her for years, she's Home Secretary. Um, I think they're dealing with the problems caused. I think, I think that the clear out of the 21, the purging of the people who are Remainers and who aren't, aren't actually conservative in their views in many, in many ways. Um, I don't know, you can be hopeful, but they're not going to let him, are they? So the battle that's com commencing is Boris Johnson eating educated, representing the people. There is a, I don't know, I think he needs a pact or should do a pact with Nigel Farage so that the Brexit party target, Labour, Heartlands, that simply the Tories can't go in and get the votes. They got the mining towns where there's such a disillusion or such a resentment against the, what is the Tory party. The Brexit party can generally fill that. But I, I don't like, again, Nigel Farage, I think threw a lot of people under the bus, but he has put pressure. It was the European result. So mate, look, you have to look at where it's gone. It, it was probably the right move and everything he's done as well. Even when he slammed us, it probably has been the right move to put pressure. The Tory party and, and Boris Johnson realising as he's coming in, if he doesn't deliver on Brexit, he knows the Tory party finished. If he doesn't deliver. But, we, but people don't want Theresa May's deal getting rid of the, the backstop. That's not Brexit. So mm. it's, time will tell. It? But as essentially, all of these things, it's interesting times. Mm. It's interesting. Last question. Uh, earlier you mentioned your identity as a journalist. Sadi Javid as well. I thought he's been quite great mm. when I've been watching him. I like your phrase that you're a journalist whether the media likes it or not. And it's true. Journalism is an activity. It's not like a DNA test. It's not just not a journalist, but what they hate is um, the, the most watched journalist in yeah. their country. Well, and then even fact, today, all, all those tabloids, they were there because you get clicks. They, hate, they say they hate you, but they actually love talking about you, but they disparage you. It's strange. It's like Trump in a way. It's, um, and the lies, man. So essentially, I've got, plan, I've got plans. I'm just going to take my time, but I have got lots of plans for documentaries I want to make and ideas I've had whilst even sat in there, things I've been working on um, with regards to confronting their lies. Is it, can you give us some hints? I, is it, I know you're talking about the rape so, of So with, with the rape of Britain, so people, just to get a few things out clear as well. Before I went to prison, I showed a promo for a documentary called Shallow. Jesus Christ, and the usual, the usual, the usual, old school BNP types, the usual people who want to use an excuse to attack and I'm a Zionist. Those usual people all leapt on it, yeah? Now, I, was, I knew I was going to jail, okay? I knew I was coming back to prison. I want to start working on the rape of Britain. I want to do this, I, I, we've laid the foundations, but I want to, I also don't want to mess about. When I sit down, when I go to those cities and start getting those young victims to tell their stories or their families, I know the consequence that's going to bring from Muslim gangs and from the police trying to shut it down. Now, if, so I know I'm going to jail. If I'd have gone up and started those things and then got sent to jail for a year or two years, which I'm expecting, and leave those people in limbo, right. when I go and start that documentary, I will move into that city for four weeks right. and I'll get every single thing on camera. So before I'm going to jail, I thought, I'm not going to disappear and live in a different town for four weeks. Right. I'm going to be with my wife and kids before I go to jail. Right. I got told, as I told you, that my case would be adjourned to pre-sentence reports. I had a six to eight week gap where I thought, right, I can fit in Shalom. Yeah. In this, Shalom was a documentary which we tried to right. work. We, right. we were all trying to tell, but Caelan was, we, with the fallout of Caelan and that, they had, they, had, they had rights signed by, so people know, Israel Shalom, people think it's about Israel, and it's about, and the word Shalom. Israel, Israel Shalom is the gentleman's name. He was a bloke who'd become a friend of mine who was persecuted to death. I'm telling his story. Yeah. Yeah? 
So I had so rather than just sit at home for eight weeks before my court before going to prison, I thought I can fit in yeah. while seeing my family, I can fit in this documentary. So my idea was to fit in this documentary, which we didn't get to fit in because they sent me straight to jail. And then um and then the rape of Britain. So even now, the rape of Britain is gonna be a risky documentary to, to tell and show because I'm going to find the groomers. I know who some of them are already, I know their businesses. I'm gonna walk into their businesses. Hmm. These sort of things are gonna cause disruption, probably attacks against me. So essentially now, and I need to move to the towns and cities. I'm coming out of jail now. I'm not about to move next week to another town and city and be away from my family for weeks on end. So I'm gonna put in my time period for starting that documentary. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time. Um, that, and I've got another documentary which I, wanna, which I can work on easily as well. But um, that's what I wanna do is just tell, tell the stories that people aren't telling, uncover and embarrass the people who deserve embarrassing, um, the people sitting enjoying their pensions, who turned a blind eye and allowed the rape of our children. I think everyone in the country needs to know their faces. Um, they need confronting. And when I say confronting, confronting with a camera. They need to be you know, put in the limelight, spotlight needs to be on them for a little while. Um, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. But I just, essentially, I need to, need to plan it while I do it in my time. And, um, but that's, so yeah. Well, Tommy, I, your kids are almost out of school, so I'll wrap up. But I recall that it was exactly in the same pub that you and I met and chatted when you were released out of Onley, uh, the, the horrible prison in which you were tortured. And I must say that physically, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, you were so much better now than you were shell shocked back then. It was like a, it was it was like a detonation went off next year. I wasn't, um, I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting to get released when I got released. Right. So I wasn't expecting to get released. This time as well, even this morning, I was quite emotional this morning, which, but that's from being looked up by No, yeah. it's, it's not normal. So, yeah. so, it's, and, um, so yeah, I was quite, and even though I wasn't, I wasn't excited about getting out, huh. which I should be sure. Isn't that interesting? Well, Tommy, I want to let you know because it sounds like you got a lot of mail, but we get an enormous amount of email and comments on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. And I think you know it, but I'll just tell you anyways, there are people not just in the United Kingdom, but around the world who follow your story, they feel like they have a personal friendship with you. Yeah, yeah. And some of them do. It's not just my journey, it's theirs. Well, and the issues you talk about are so, they, they ring a bell for so many people. And so a lot of people, I know if they could speak through me here, they would say, please keep it up. Please be smart. Please be careful. Please make good choices. But please keep fighting. Because as I've said before, I believe that you're the last lion. And if they stop you, well, then who else could there possibly be? So you've got to keep doing it. You've got to keep well, doing it. Again, I was asked that this morning. Will, will you be back? Because there's a documentary being filmed in Belmarsh Prison. Will you be back? Back in prison is what yeah, they meant? Will, will you be back? Well, let's do our best to let that let's do our best. Let's do our best. But I said the same answer to him is the minute you start worrying about consequences, the minute you stop doing what you do. Yeah. Now, I'm going to continue to do what I do. I don't intend to break any yeah. laws. I'm not going to break any laws. Um, I will defend myself. I need to defend myself at times. Um, but it, it's like they, I'm going to continue doing the work I do. Yeah. We've seen how much that's upset and angered them already. Um, so, yeah, uh, if I, I'll just say a massive, I'm going to, People get a video from me in the, in the next week um, talking about my experience as well and about how grateful I am. But to everyone who wrote to me, everyone who mailed to me, all the people who spent their money traveling, some of the distances, I'm reading your mails. I'm reading the mails to some people and they're telling me the times they're getting on mega buses mm. and they're transport down on their own, yeah, mm. against their family's wishes. And then, they, and then I'm reading the full stories and it's, it's, it, it was such a, it, as I say, fulfilling, heartwarming to read their journeys that they've gone on themselves from being here to waking up to questioning to falling out with family to and I, I say the same thing to all of them I've been through that same experience and all the people who have turned against you or your friends that might be disagreeing with you and not understanding there will come a time when they understand and then they'll realize that they're wrong and you'll see you'll see the same as I've seen so yeah I'm grateful and as I said uh, I'm grateful to everyone for the support man I know well, folks, uh, I thank you for joining us today. Uh, and I want to say thanks to the folks who have chipped in for the crowdfunding. This is my third trip over during the period of your... I want your air miles, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> and Jessica, the young reporter uh, who visited you with a chaperone, I might add, because of the gossips out there. Let me set that straight. And I'm glad we did because... You say the prison was exemplary, and I take your word for it. I said this morning, because they've got this documentary and they finished filming today. Mm. And, I, I said, yeah. and I said, would I have been treated fair if your cameras weren't here? 
But, but, but then if I'm honest, I said, that might be a bit unfair because after meeting Rob Davis, who's the, the governor, yeah. and, and when I say meeting him, in this unit that I'm on, every single day someone has to come from healthcare, mm-hmm. someone has to come, because you're in isolation, someone has to come, a governor has to come, whether it be duty governor, but they have to come and say, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I'd say that, is it a bit unfair saying that I think that after meeting him, no matter what, he'd have treated me the same way I've been treated, he's a completely fair bloke and he's doing a good job and a difficult job. And, um, well, I hope so, but I, I agree with your um, assessment. We'll never you know. And, no, you wouldn't know, but this is the first time. This is the first time they've treated me like yeah. that. First time I've been taken to the gym. First time. I think that this I'm other still, British journalist, him being there was important. I think the four rebel visits, we'll never know what it would have been like had no, I'm glad we did it. And I enjoyed visiting you. No, well, it got me. I said, so my day, my day is 11.15 locked up, yeah? And then until the next morning at nine o'clock. It's a long. That's a long day. Mm. It's a long day, no matter what. Because it's a long day. So I said, I was, on, that, on that ship, blue map, you see them. I was on blue map. But, so I spent twenty-two hours a day sitting on that map. Mm. But um, so when you come, at, they, when you have a visit, when I have a visit at two o'clock, that's completely. It weren't like a day. It weren't for mm. me that day's done. Because then I think they lock the door up at quarter past eleven. They're opening it again at two o'clock. Then they bang it back up at four, and then friends is on. We well, had a range of visitors. I was glad to be one and. And in one of my visits, it was your old friends from way back in the day, and to see you just banter yeah. and have that laugh, it took you, it probably took you half an hour just to get into the conversational groove again. Because yeah. you can't live in silence and then just become social immediately. I was, that's what made me the happiest, is it took like a half hour, an hour for you to yeah, yeah. normalize again, but, and the jokes. I mean, Which is, you know, the tiring of that is, when, same thing when my kids come in, I felt exhausted after a visit because I want them to see me in the best, yeah. like that nothing's yeah. going wrong. Yeah. That they're, yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, if my, my mates, I said, I, I don't know if I said that earlier. I, tried, I was going to buy the Muslim gown. I was going to do it on you, yeah. And come walking into the visit, like. That would so, be good. Yeah. I was going to do it coming out of jail. Because you can buy it 22 pounds it was in the canteen. Oh, that's so funny. Well, Tommy, let's let you get back to your kids, folks. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you want to chip into the crowdfunding, go to prisonreports.com. I'll be back in the UK. Tommy has another trial. Um, I don't think it's a secret. I think I can. No, it's not it. a secret. I, I was going to do a video de- updating everyone on lots of stuff because I've got three more court dates in the next eight weeks. Wow. Well, um, I know only about one of them. I'll be there for the football uh, trial where they're trying to ban you from football. That's in October. October, yeah. So you can tell me about you the. Know, we know the da- you know the Daily Mirror journalist said earlier. I like, oh, was at the old Bailey because I'm high profile. Yeah. No, I'm at Luton, I'm at Luton Court. Yeah. Not October 18th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that Daily Mirror in interaction was as weird as yet. Let's get you out of here, my friend. Thanks. All right, uh, from all of us here at The Rebel to you at home. Goodbye. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.